All right, so I've been using the Galaxy A55 for more than a week. Some of you guys have wanted to know how it performs and whether it is a bad phone because it has an Exynos chip. Well, all your questions will be answered in today's video. And I also have some thoughts about the most low profile Galaxy A series phone ever launched. For the first time after so many years, Samsung hasn't done any grand launch or celebrity endorsements for the new Galaxy A series and all we got is just a press release announcing the phone and we got the review in it thereafter. Well, you might assume that Samsung is trying to cut costs or there's nothing special about the new Galaxy A series this time, which I can agree on this sentiment to some extent. But once you take a closer look, the Galaxy A55 is in fact still a great new mid-range phone with some improvements over the Galaxy A54 and it's targeted at those looking to upgrade from a much older Galaxy A series. And yes, if you're still rocking a Galaxy A53 or A54, there's really no need to upgrade to the Galaxy A55. Now, compared to the Galaxy A54, the A55 is now a much larger device with a 6.6-inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display that refreshes at 120Hz. That's 0.2 inches larger than the Galaxy A54 and is protected by Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which is a pretty significant upgrade from Gorilla Glass 5 last year. But on the other hand, I still don't understand why Samsung isn't giving a slimmer bezel display here because it would have made it a slightly compact device. I love the new aluminum frame with a bulge that has the power button and volume buttons, while the lilac color model that I have here has some rainbow effect when shining against light. It is a pretty good fashion statement in every way. Powering the Galaxy A55 is the Exynos 1480 chip paired to 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of expandable storage. The phone's processor now features a more efficient 4 nanometer process, faster CPU clock speeds, and a new Xclipse 530 GPU that's based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. This might sound a little too technical to the layman, but in general, this chip not only brings improved performance and power efficiency than before, but we can also look forward to its GPU capabilities. And I'm happy to report that it has performed exceptionally well on Honkai Stario, which I've been playing extensively on high graphics setting at 60 FPS. Other than that, there's also slightly improved performance in general stuff such as launching and switching between apps. And even if I was using the phone for extended sessions, it doesn't get toasty like what you usually get on older Exynos chips. Samsung's One UI on the Galaxy A55 continues to offer one of the best software experiences within the segment. And while we are missing out the Galaxy AI features right here, the Galaxy A55 comes with Samsung Knox Vault which is a dedicated processor and secure storage that prevents attacks and unauthorized access to your sensitive data. You are also able to store files and have different app logins in a secure environment that's separated from the main operating system. So even if your phone gets stolen or wiped, no one can gain access to stored data in that secure environment. The cameras on the Galaxy A55 is the exact same hardware you will find on the Galaxy A54, which I really find them to be serviceable for mid-range phone standards. And Samsung claims that the improved ISP on the new processor enables the cameras to capture better low-light photos, which I don't doubt it, as it probably has better dynamic range and process noise levels better than before. But it isn't going to be a huge difference as compared to the Galaxy A54. What I am happy though is that the front 32 megapixel camera can now take 4K videos at 30 FPS, which makes this a great phone for vlogging if you shoot in 4K. Battery life on the Galaxy A55 is about the same as the Galaxy A54, where the 5000mAh battery will easily last a 5 hour screen on time in a single charge on 5G networks, which is pretty decent for most people as usual. However, I am not impressed with the 25W charging speed and Samsung should seriously consider offering faster charging speeds on the Galaxy A55 successor. So yep, that's the Samsung Galaxy A55. It is in fact more than just a minor refresh from the previous model and the improvements Samsung has made is definitely commendable. It isn't a necessary upgrade for those who are already rocking a Galaxy A50 series from two years ago, but if you're looking to get one, it costs 1,999 ringgit in Malaysia, which is pretty much a standard price tag for mid-range phones like this. And considering that it gets up to four years of Android OS upgrades and five years of security updates, it is a pretty good phone to own for the long term. So yeah, that's all for my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy A55. Let me know what are yours in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos coming right up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.